Right now we have an open hole drilled right on top of that box. That's the box. Man, that's the box. That's the box. From the discovery of a strange wooden box that promises the treasures of the fallen Aztec Empire to the many problems that the father and son duo and their team face as they attempt to extract this promising treasure, here is the biggest discovery ever made at the Blind Frog Ranch. For some time now, we have watched as Dwayne Olina and his son Chad have tried to take on the many mysteries surrounding the 160-foot acre of land that is Blind Frog Ranch, named for the blind frogs that can be found in the many caverns located in the area. Blind Frog Ranch is perhaps plagued with as many mysteries as the 512-acre ranch that is Skinwalker Ranch, both located in the U Inter Basin of Utah. There must be something strange and mysterious going on in these places, and for now, the father and son duo have dedicated their lives to finding out the answers to the many secrets concerning this strange ranch. One would have thought that their Oliners may have been put off by the fact that the locals think that the land is cursed, especially with the rumors that the same wretched skinwalkers of the Navajo law that are said to be taunting the perimeter of Skinwalker Ranch are also wandering around the limits of Blind Frog Ranch in search of their victims. While that didn't seem to scare Dwayne off in the slightest, eager to find the riches that are rumored to be hidden on this strange piece of land. Dwayne pretty much decided that taking on the mysteries of Blind Frog Ranch would be a great change of scenery from his multi-million dollar oil business. Like who does that? Either way, the Texan oil magnate decided that it was time to focus his attention on the strange events taking place on Blind Frog Ranch as well as the prospect of treasure that the mysterious spot has to offer to those willing to learn the truth behind the strange things that take place at the Blind Frog Ranch. The same goes for his son Chad, who is a great example of the saying that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, sharing the same beliefs that his father had about their strange and mysterious place that is Blind Frog Ranch. Chad decided to hop onto that plane to Utah to join his father who had been taking in the many mysteries and the many treasure hunting prospects that the Blind Frog Ranch had to offer. Chad so believed in his father's vision of Blind Frog Ranch that he sold his crop sharing business and his home so that he could make the move with his wife and his four kids to Utah. That said, that isn't all that the Oliners sacrificed in order to give it their all on the Blind Frog Ranch. Eager to make the treasure hunting adventure on the mysterious ranch, the pair took huge financial risks in order to make sure that they come away with the many proceeds that success on the Blind Frog Ranch would have to offer. For example, they invested in the ranch by actually purchasing the 160 acres of land. Not only that, they went ahead to buy the necessary tools and machines that they needed to carry out their exploration of the ranch. Undoubtedly, that would cost them a pretty penny or two. Sure, they may be able to compensate for these investments in the ranch by organizing tours of the property, but they know that if they want to succeed there, they have to start coming up with some answers for the strange events that keep on happening on the supposedly haunted ranch. Perhaps that is why ever since they set foot on the property back in 2021, they have been tirelessly performing experiments, investigations, and treasure hunting expeditions. That seemed to be the only way that they could get to the bottom of the mysteries concerning their supernatural and paranormal activities that have been taking place on the mysterious ranch since the 1800s. That is why all the discoveries they had made ever since they set off on this truth-seeking adventure have been appreciated by all of us watching at home. Hopefully, this will help them uncover as many secrets as possible while working through the mysterious spot that is the Blind Frog Ranch. One of the most interesting discoveries that was made during the course of this truth-finding mission on the mystery at Blind Frog Ranch TV documentary series was the discovery of this interesting wooden treasure. This wooden treasure came in the form of a fascinating man-made wooden box that was found in a flooded cavern at the end of the season. Unfortunately for them, 
They couldn't really look into what was this wooden box or are there interesting things about it like where it was from and why it was even there to begin with. This was due to the weather at the time that they came across this flooded cavern and the wooden box that they'd eventually find. Thanks to the weather, the team would find that the cavern would be inaccessible for a good six months and it may be best to stay away from the area if they truly value their lives. Turns out that they did because when the weather did get better, Dwayne and Chad, Alina lead their team right back to this interesting flooded cavern. Upon finding their way back to the cavern and the box, they had hoped that when they were able to look into it, they would find some Aztec gold. With any luck, it may be the gold that belonged to Moctezuma II, one of the last emperors of the Aztec Empire before it was brutally destroyed by the conquistador known as Hernan Cortes and his Spanish fleets. As such, Getting the box became a matter of high priority to the team because there was a great chance that it would give them the treasure that they were desperate to find on the ranch. At least that way, they could have fulfilled the promise of finding treasure on Blind Frog Ranch. Hoping to reduce any chances of failure to a minimum, the team decided that the best thing to do in their position may be to seek the knowledge of an expert in this field. This was so that they could execute their plan of making a wooden sample from the box. That way, they could use such a feat to perform a carbon dating procedure that would help them know if this was truly a box that could have originated from that period in time when the Aztec Empire was flourishing with all that valuable gold in their community. Eager to get this wooden sample from the box that was lodged deep into this flooded cavern, Chad eagerly volunteered to get into his scuba gear so that he could get to the box with any luck. He can get something close to that 4 inch sample that would be perfect for their carbon dating procedure. The viewers watching keenly from home could tell you how palpable the tension and excitement was in the air as Chad went into the waters. Sure, he was a pro, but anything could go wrong. So understandably, they all let out a huge sigh of relief when Chad eventually returned to the surface with that sample which he promptly handed over to Dwayne while looking for the fastest way to get dry again. Now, they can get to work finding out if this was truly a box that could have belonged to their Aztecs and maybe even their Emperor Moctezuma II. As fascinating as it must be to have that sample of that wooden box that may lead them to the bountiful gold hall of the Aztecs and their fallen emperor, the team must have at last been captured by the curiosity of a mysterious camera that they had once found when they were working through the many mysteries of the Blind Frog Ranch. So I was really nervous going back in the cave because I thought when we pulled it apart and the box would be all broken up, it'd be scattered. But luckily just one lock ripped and the rest was intact. This occurred when they were walking along the cave area on the ranch. This was when they realized that there was a weird camera that seemed to be watching over the pond. Understandably, this was quite a point of concern for the team because they had no idea of how it got there and who even put it there to begin with. Lord knows how long it has even been there, and as such. It was important to get to the bottom of the source of this mysterious camera. In order to do so, Dwayne and the team decided that it may be best to hire a camera expert. At least that way, they could get some answers that could help them know if they were safe there. Well, we could say that now we may understand the reason behind the saying that ignorance is bliss because the camera expert came with something that may have been a bit of troubling news for the Oliners and the rest of their mystery at the Blind Frog Ranch team. Apparently, while they were not immediately able to tell the team how long the camera had been there, the camera expert was able to tell them that this camera was a highly capable camera that was able to record all the events that were taking place on the ranch. It truly wasn't to be slept on as not only could it record all the events that were taking place there, it could also zoom in to get enough details to tell an accurate story of the events that were taking place on their ranch. It was even good enough to zoom into faces from a great distance like some of those Samsung phones. Don't mess with those Samsung phones. As grim as such news must have been for the team, they must have been pleased that the camera expert could at least give them some good news. Well. Some may consider it to be good news. You see, 
the camera expert was good enough to log into the camera's records with any luck. This would help him and the team to find out what their owner of the camera may have recorded while he had it up there. That's why it must have upset them to find out that when the camera expert looked into the records, he found out that all the records had been deleted by the owner or whoever was able to access the records before they could be checked. Understandably, this made it impossible for them to get some important answers that would have helped them know a bit more about who was watching them. Now they don't know what this person may have seen or how long they may have been watching them. As much as they had been left with more questions than answers, following what could be considered to be a harrowing discovery, the team found that this discovery did give them some answers. Some of these answers were to questions that they hadn't even considered in the past. At least now they know that they were being watched by someone who had access to sophisticated technology, such as the camera that they now had in their possession. As such, they knew that they needed to have a bit more urgency in terms of their performance of their activities on the ranch. For example, now they know that they had to get to that wooden box that was lodged underneath the flooded cavern as quickly as possible. That's probably why they rushed the retrieval of the wooden sample from the cavern. Without wasting much time, they took this wooden sample to their labs so that they could perform some of the analytic procedures that they had been desperate to perform for some time now. This helped them learn that the wooden box actually dated back to the 1600s long after the downfall of Moctezuma II. Eager to get to the bottom of the mystery of the wooden box, the team proceeded to extract the wooden box from their cavern. At least that way, they could finally check if the wooden box did have any gold in it at all. Understandably, this proved to be a difficult task, even to such a team as their owners and the crew of the mystery at Blind Frog Ranch team. The team would find that this was much more difficult than they would have thought because somebody had to swim into their tunnel of the flooded cavern so that they could see how they could best approach this problem. Thankfully, the team was competent enough to perform this task. During their next dive into the tunnel, they were able to find the exact spot where the box was. This allowed them to dig a hole directly underneath it. That way. Chad could dive into the tunnel with the sole purpose of securing the box with some chains so that the guys above water could pull the box out of the cavern. The box was simply too big for the team to expect Chad to swim back up with it. Once the team concluded with the dig, all they had to do was to wait for Chad to get ready to go down there. That would mean that they'd have to wait till the next morning which is when Chad and his dad planned on carrying out the next phase of their plan. Fortunately, Chad woke up early so that he could carry out his part of the plan. However, this didn't mean that the team wouldn't come across any challenges. Unfortunately, as Chad was fixing the chains around the box, the team found out that it may be too heavy for them to lift it out with a crane. This may be good news to those who were expecting that the box would be full of that valuable gold that they had been searching for on the ranch, as if that wasn't bad enough. The jagged nature of the cavern thanks to the huge rocks surrounding the tunnel made it very difficult to pull the box as it made for a terrain that lacked a clear path. How are they going to extract this box now? Well, hopefully, in time they'll come up with the solutions that will help them retrieve what could be the life-changing treasure of Moctezuma II. Well, as some time went on, the team decided that perhaps the best way for them to overcome the problem with their wooden box that was stuck within this flooded cavern was to head down there with a jackhammer. Chad's been texting me all winter about that box. I know he's on kind of a warpath to get back there and learn more about it. Bottom line is him just swimming around aimlessly, not knowing where he's going. It's really dangerous. That way they could make the tunnel more accessible for their extraction project or they could use the jackhammer to knock off some of the boulders within the tunnel. Thankfully, it turned out to be a good idea as the execution of the plan seemed to go well. Before long, Dwayne and Chad were swimming into the tunnel. This allowed an excited Dwayne to see the box with his own eyes for the very first time. And thanks to this excitement, the father and son duo were able to clear a good path for the men to get the box out of the tunnel. Unfortunately, just as the team was ready to pull the box out, 
This is a good entry point, but we need to let the water calm down. So, you know, we got some kind of visibility. So tomorrow morning, we're going to check it with a drone. I think it's open. And if it is open, then Chad's going to go in for a swim. They were surprised by yet another hindering setback. Apparently, one of the wooden boxes that was supporting the box as it was being hoisted out of the water wasn't strong enough to support the box's weight during this exercise. As a result, it broke into pieces, which meant they had also lost the box. All that effort just for nothing. As you can imagine, this was a frustrating point for the team, especially when Wayne realized that Chad didn't take perfect care to secure chains. See the black on there? Yeah, that is hydrothermal alteration from an igneous source. There isn't an igneous source here for at least 60 miles radius. Enraged, Dwayne stalks off in disbelief as he struggles to understand his son's negligence. Once tempers had cooled off, the Oliners and the rest of the team decided to perform a status check on their wooden box. Thankfully, the box hadn't been destroyed during their failed effort to extract it. Wanting to make something of this failed attempt, Chad decided that it may be best to perform another dive so that they could retrieve the items that may have fallen out of it. Once Chad got down there, he found that it was some rocks that had fallen out of their box, so they would in reality, just looking like this, right? They would have never had to come back to your site. And we're about to find out if this is something that they were storing locally, or if I can log into this and find out if it was something they're accessing anywhere in the world. Eager to learn more about these rocks, Chad took them back to the miners camp so that they could give it a good look. Before long, the team found that the rocks had large deposits of iron. For those who know what this means, they'd understand the reason this made the team excited as they weighed their prospects of discovering some treasure down in the flooded cavern. You see, iron is said to be a good indicator of presence of gold because gold always seemed to be found close to iron mines. They may be close to the money after all. While they considered the prospect of their proximity to gold, Chad's first dive was a failure for a few reasons. The way Dwayne solves problems, he takes a big machine and smashes up rocks. I like to take a scientific approach and use technology when it can help us. Further examination made the team open their minds to the possibilities that the wooden box and the boulders found within them must have been moved from another location to where they are now. Eager to learn some more about the stones, the team decided to crack the oars open to see if they may be able to find anything interesting inside them. They must have been fascinated by the trace metal elements that they found within the rocks, especially as the deposits seemed to have cylindrical shapes. As you can imagine, this must have been strange to the members of the team that discovered their cylindrical elements and the viewers watching their progress from home because these elements should not be cylindrical in shape. Either way, the team was eager to learn some more facts about these trace metal elements and before long, they realized that the metal in the rocks was made from gallium. This must have been so fascinating to those working with this strange metal because they could only wonder about what these metals could have been used for back then, although we may have uses for gallium today, especially if you want to make bright mirrors or liquid thermometers. Back then people couldn't find much use for the soft metal. They couldn't use it to make jewelry or coins because it melted quickly. While the team seemed certain that their Aztecs may have come across the metal, they may not have been able to develop any uses for it before the conquistadors ravaged through their empire. That said, they cannot deny that the metal was placed into those rocks by a human as such. If they were going to get to the bottom of their reason for this strange placement, they were going to have to drill a new entrance to the box. Well, today's the day we find out what's in the box. And I have to say it wasn't easy getting here. We spent the last several days jackhammering rocks in the cave trying to clear out a path, so that they could see what else could be hidden in the unexplored 99% of the cave system on there. Blind Frog Ranch. At least that would be one of the ways that they could get more answers to their many mysteries surrounding the captivating ranch. Sure, 
some may be interested in the search for the answers behind the supernatural and paranormal activities that seem to take place on Skinwalker Ranch. But there are others who are eager to see if there is truly any treasure to be found on their strange ranch. So when I crack open this first rock, you know, I might expect to see some fine gold or silver in it. But instead, there's this core, this cylinder full of shiny metal in there. With any luck, the Oliners and the team will reveal the truths behind the mysteries at Blind Frog Ranch. From the discovery of a strange wooden box that promises the treasures of their fallen Aztec empire, to the many problems that the father and son duo and their team face as they attempt to extract this promising treasure, here is the biggest discovery ever made at their Blind Frog Ranch.